is now it is now seven o'clock, and I'd like to call to order the March sixteenth, two thousand sixteen meeting of the Novi Library Board of Trustees. Trustee Vermer, would you please do the roll call? Sure, thank you. Lisa Agusta here. William Lawler here. Craig Mesne here. Tara Mesne here. Doreen Popa here. Ramesh Verma is here. Geoffrey Wood. He is absent excused. He's the one new member. Yes, he is. He did have a previous engagement for this evening, but will be joining us next month. Rachida Engagaredi here. Cindy Hall absent excused. I we didn't hear from her, so. Not so we sure. can have a pledge of allegiance. Yes, if everyone would please stand and join in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Great, thank you. Let's start by looking at the agenda for tonight's meeting. I would like to make one change to point number nine, I'd like to make the goals update 9C, and I'd like to add a 9A, which is a congratulations and welcome to our new board appointees, and a 9B for a brief discussion on officer appointments. Are there any other comments, questions on the agenda? Yes. So you're suggesting we put the goals under the consent agenda? No, no, no. On paragraph nine, point nine, president's report, yes. I'd like to make 9A become 9C, I hear you. Okay. and then in front of it put the two things that I mentioned. That was helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments, questions on the agenda? Say it again, 9B. What is 9B? 9B would be officer appointments. If no other questions, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? It passed unanimously. <laughs> Moving on to point four, the consent agenda. There's three items that you see there. Uh, the first is the approval of claims and warrants, L540. Second is the approval of the budget planning session meeting minutes from January 16th, and third is the approval of the regular meeting minutes from last February's meeting, February 17th. I move approval. I do have one concern. The uh, meeting of January 16th, the attendees, I was not listed as an attendee. What page is that? Yeah. Page six, and I was there. <laughs> And there's even a uh, citation in number eight that Trustee Lawler asked if the list is prioritized, and Ms. Farkas let him know that it's not. Um, so I just would ask that that change. Be noted. Be yes. Okay. Absolutely. May I ask a question about that? Absolutely. On page eight, it said these employees have 12 to 16 hour shifts. That's not right, is it? Six, they don't work 12 to 16 hour shifts per week. Uh, what page are we on? I'm uh, sorry. Eight. At the top. Under A, under minimum wage increase, it says these employees work 12 to 16 hour shifts. Uh, that is, I apologize, that's per week. Okay. I 12 just, to 16 hours per really week. Sure. Yes. Okay, okay perfect. Mm -hmm. okay. We can change that. Let's put in per week. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good catch. Yes, thank you. Does anyone else have comments, questions on those three points, A, B, and C? Then I move approval as um, discussed with the changes. Okay. Second. Very good. All in favor of approving the consent agenda with the two items as noted, say aye. 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 Any opposition? It passed unanimously. Thank you. Point five, correspondence. I we don't believe we evening. have any. Mm -hmm. Nope. And point six, presentations or special none guests. This I think it's the same. All right, very good. We are at the point in the meeting now for our first public comment. 
this is a time for anyone to come to the podium and address the board. In order to hear all citizen comments at a reasonable hour, the board requests that speakers respect the five minute time limit. This is not a question and answer session. However, it is an opportunity to voice your thoughts with the Board of Trustees. Seeing no one coming forward, we will consider that section closed and move on to the student representative report. On February 8th, teens honored the Chinese New Year by sampling Chinese foods. On February 9th, teens celebrated National Pizza Day. On February 13th, teens were introduced to robotics at the Introduction to Robotics program. On the 17th, they attended the first teen book club meeting, uh, which was sponsored by a grant from Community Financial. On the 23rd, they learned how to write their first resume and other resume writing tips at Resume Writing Workshop. And the teen space had a total of 482 attendees. At the month's teen advisory board meeting, members made library team Valentine's to celebrate Love Your Library Month and plan for the upcoming service project. And guest speaker Jane Hecker spoke about the upcoming Let's Read Mad programs. And the upcoming programs are the Cridpreneur Coding Workshop on March 4th, Tips and Techniques for Successful Interview on March 9th, Battle of the Books on March 12th, Saving for College March 16th, and the t this month's TAB meeting is on March 18th. And there are pictures of some of the events on the following pages. Until I read your report, I did not know that we had a National Pizza Day or that it was February 9th. But I tip, I tip my hat to whoever coordinated getting this full table of donated pizza boxes. I think that was great. <laughs> I'm sure they were well enjoyed. And make sure to invite the board. <laughs> well, I was going to add that. <laughs> That was that worked out well for you, I'm sure. <laughs> and, uh, yes, ma'am. Um, how did the resume writing go? Well, and then you're now going to follow it up with interviews. Do we have a, a significant number of uh, teens who attend that? And you know who conducts it? And um, what, how does that go? Because it's such an important mm -hmm. aspect. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering how that. Happened. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I can find them out for you. I can tell you that we worked with the city of Novi and the HR department in order to provide the resume program. So we used a resource right here in the community um, that we you know, rely on and, and we think is a very credible um, resource in order to use with the kids, So, which we appreciated very much. But I can definitely get you some numbers. I'd be interested. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure. Yes. Um, which events have like the biggest turnout? What type of events? What are the what do the teens like the most? You guys want to answer? Um, I think they prefer like the food events where they can have this <laughs> <Right>. so, <okay. laughs> Good. Anything with food, they come. Yeah. Okay. Um, who chooses the activities for the teens? In the um, before the engage goes out, the teen advisory board discusses what kind of programs they would like to see. So we usually have a brainstorming session um, a few meetings before engage has to be published, and then um, the officers and usually uh, with the advisor we go through the ideas and find which ones are the most popular, and that's how we decide. Very nice. Um, now, are they teen led? Or do you know some of the activities, or they pretty much they have outside sources come in to help them? Well, teen volunteers help out at some of the activities. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Any other comments for the student reps? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's interesting to see all the different activities you, you're involved with. It's quite good. Thank you. All right, moving on to point nine, President's Report. Just would like to take a moment to, to congratulate and acknowledge the three people who were recently appointed to the library board. Um, Ramesh was reappointed this past Monday. 
Uh, Ramesh has served since March of 2007, I believe, and we were delighted that he came back. He's our senior member on the board and brings, <laughs> brings not only a very unique and valuable perspective, but also a lot of experience that, that we need on the board. So thanks for stepping up again. Thank you. Our second of three recent appointees is Melissa Augusta. Uh, just a few things about Melissa, if you don't mind. <laughs> um, Melissa is a graduate of Novi High of Schoolcraft College at Henry Ford Community College. Been a Novi resident for 18 years. Is a uh, 13 or 11 years as general manager and owner of a private business in Novi, employing over 50 people. Melissa participated in the Novi Ambis Ambassador Program. And I think that if it didn't spark your interest in the library, I think it had something to do with it. Is that right? That was the whole reason that I'm here, yes. Learning all about the city and the different departments, and, and that's what kind of started the whole ball to roll. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, welcome aboard. We're Thank glad you. to have you. Thank you. I'm very excited. Our, our third appointee was unable to make this since it was a meeting on short notice. His name is Jeffrey Wood, an 11-year resident of Novi, a graduate of Grand Valley State University with 18 years of sales and management experience in a technical high-tech company. Um, he's participated in the Novi Educational Foundation since 2005 and served as a volunteer coach for Novi Parks and Recreation and Novi Youth Baseball from 2006 to 2012. He also has some, fundra pardon me, some fundraising experience, and I'm sure we'll be happy to tap into that uh, as soon as we get him here, and he should be here next month. So again, thanks to all of you for stepping up, and welcome aboard. And congratulations. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Nine B, just want to make a, a brief comment on officer appointments. I remiss you were unable to be here last month, but as you know, we uh, briefly discussed you and Tara working to bring a slate next month for everyone to vote on for officers. I just want to make sure that A, you're aware, and B, that that schedule still seems to be okay. Yes. Good. Any, anything else you want to add to that at this point? No, actually. Almost uh, we have worked on that uh, slate and it will be presented next week. Good. Good. Thank you. Down to 9C, which is the goals update. Julie, if you'd like to. Sure. Um, this is where I highlight just a few things that might have happened over the month. Um, we typically highlight in red the newest uh, the newest entries that have come about in the last month. So on page uh, 35, um, at the middle of, of the page there, it says display case for project has arrived and will be set up. This has to do with our um, 3D printer and our programs. We won a grant uh, through the American Library Association back in the summer. And um, the display case, if you get a chance, it's on the second floor just outside the teen stop room. It's a beautiful glass display case. Um, the money that we received for the grant went towards that, um, along with getting a free 3D printer to use for programming. And so we have someone on our staff, Aaron Durrett, who is going to be working with teens and, and going to be developing some 3D programming um, with our teen population as, and tweens as well. We're going to be kicking some things off come April, but you'll start to see some of these 3D creations in that display case. And part of the grant was to showcase and show people you know, what's being created, which is why the dis display case was purchased. Um, moving forward, if you look just a couple pages ahead to page 38 at the top, um, there's a highlight of local activity director is bringing memory loss residents to the library on a monthly basis to read and use bifocal kits. Um, you know, this is an outreach that we're doing with older adults. And um, bifocal kits, if you don't know what they are, they were purchased a, um, a number of years ago through the library. They're actual kits that have a theme to them. For example, the 50s. And what it does is there's a lot of information in that kit that helps to stem memory. Um, so someone who might have lost that, you know, that time frame 
um, can maybe uh, remember back. And it gives you uh, different things, you know, facts about the time period, things to talk about, about what was happening in the 50s, things like that. So the, the bifocal kits have different themes that they're related to, and they're, they're being used heavily by our older adult um, communities, which we appreciate, and, and we're glad that we can make this available to them to connect with our older patrons. Um, moving forward, um, which I know our team reps mentioned, but we did kick off our teen book club. You know, we didn't have one, um, and that uh, probably seems odd for the library not to have a teen book club, but, you know, our teens are very busy, um, very involved, and sometimes it's difficult for that type of programming to be offered. Well, I have to tell you that Lindsay Fricke, our, our new teen librarian who came on board last spring, has been doing some wonderful work with our teenagers, really reaching out and really making some great um, relationships. And her book club was highly attended and thanks to community financial who supported um, this particular project she's going to have a book club that's going to be sustained and keep going and these are some there are some great um, students involved and, and definitely interested in reading and, and reading in a group with us at the library we're glad to be having this teen group um, started for us uh, moving on to page 41 you saw some photos about the pizza uh, contest which our teens did and that was a highlight for me to mention to you um, also, moving along to page 44, um, I want to highlight under goal five, staff were panelists for a podcast presentation on our mobile app. So we were actually, two of our staff were asked to talk uh, um, on behalf of Boopsie, which is the company we work with to do our app, and talk about, you know, how it's worked for the library, how they're marketing, you know, what's been the response. And so they, they asked our, our staff to be talking about, you know, integrating that particular type of um, social media and and um, outlet for our patrons so it was great to be you know used as a, for a presentation but to have our our staff be the experts talking mm -hmm. uh, moving along I do believe that is about all I have um, if there's any questions or anything I can answer I'd be happy to do so Julie, on the team book club mm -hmm. is that just limited to actual books or do they branch out into the audiovisual and those kind of things just just books at this time you know there's it's still for us um you know our, our main core and we know that there are a lot of kids that we can connect with still with with that reading concept and we do they can listen to the book on tape it's just getting through the book and then having the conversation you know in the group so however they read it whether it's listening or or literally reading it from, from pages um, that doesn't matter but it's it's getting a chance to read a novel and then and discuss it Mm -hmm. yep. and goal number seven in the middle there, uh, yes. tentative project timeline and uh, cost receipts. You know, the drawings which are here attached, they are not, uh, we cannot read it. Do you have a blueprint? I don't have a blueprint. I could ask the city to send me something, but that is what they sent me. Okay. Sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Can I ask a question? Yes. Um, in regards to the patients with memory loss is that a specific program or I, I know you they said are bringing in um, memory loss residents mm -hmm. is that what is that exactly it's so, not one that we that we're actually they connected with us to bring in theirs okay. and then they're using our kits so it's not something that we've actually set up but they're using the library in that capacity perfect mm -hmm. if, if there are any memory loss like family members or you know we wanted to bring in and we asked about it would someone help direct us oh yes Perfect. absolutely mm -hmm. okay yep. thank you can i connect to it though i was just thinking that sometimes getting um memory care people onto a bus off a bus into a new facility is in and of itself right not an easy task right and so um, i was just wondering what the uh, possibilities of loaning some of these materials <coughs> to a different site. We do, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. In fact, um, the, the um, sites that we currently work with, which would be, you know, Grand Court, Fox Run, um, Whitehall, uh, Meadow Brook, those are some of the places that we go out to regularly. We actually can check out, and many of those or uh, those buildings have a library card that we can check out materials and get things to them actually in their facility. I was mm -hmm. thinking of the, like the specific memory care units mm -hmm. in some of these facilities because the facilities sure. are bigger than memory care. Right. So yep, but we can, absolutely. Mm -hmm. 
Can we check them out also? I believe you can as a patron, but I have to double check. I think when we, we purchased them uh, a few years uh, years ago with grant money, and it was specifically for that type of, um, for, for an institution or, you know, to be using them, I don't, I don't want to say for sure, but I can check for you if it's individual patrons. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. I have an overall, you know, we have all these goals and all these activities and all these strategies and all these tactics. Um, how do you keep focus on what's really important in the midst of all of this stuff kind of going on? Now, I know that's kind of an esoteric. It is because I'm going to tell you that all of them are important. I know. I know. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's different staff that are assigned. If you look at the goals document, you can see where the owner is. So AD is administration, IS is information services. There is some ownership to staff and, and many staff, not just one usually, that have these things on their radar. So it's up to them to see how it's going, to report back, and to see if we actually complete the goal or if there's an update as to why or why not. We're actually getting towards the end of the year, and I'll be probably in the next month sending out an email saying, hey, take a look at this goals document because at this point I'm going to need to know where are you with some things that maybe we haven't talked about in a while. You know, you might not be finished with it or, or near, but give me an update, and I'll be able to provide that so that you have a full document by the end of the year as to what happened. Good, thank you. Absolutely. I was just going to, if I can piggyback to sure. add a little bit of feedback to that. Um, one of the great things about the goals, too, is that we get together for an actual meeting and we, as board members, just go through every single <laughs> um, strategy, tactic, mm -hmm. and uh, goal objective. And then we kind of talk about um, making sure that they tie in with the inform, include, um, inspire. So I think that's part of it, too. But then you'll also see, like, we're all, we're in there as owners too sometimes. <laughs> For example, like the appreciation of it, yeah. Ramesh and I are on there. And mm -hmm. So it's, um, I think, a good way to look at it too is it's a huge team effort. Right, and oh for sure. how it comes together too. Yeah. Well, and what I, by doing this, I, I don't know if other directors do it this way, but I, I like to always have something to be looking at to know where I am and where I'm gauging myself and, and even for the staff. But I do think this gives you a great piece of talking points. Uh, for the community. You know, you can be looking through this and, and for yourself hone on things that are of interest to you that you then can be saying, did you know that we do this and this and this? So it's my way of constantly feeding you some information that you have at your fingertips. Uh, to piggyback to you, Tara, um, with goal setting, I want to let you know that goal setting is on my mind and I'm probably going to be looking to set a Saturday aside for us to do some goal setting um, in April. So I'm uh, which is about a month away, so I will let you know for sure. I should have that date um, hammered down by the end of this week. I'm looking towards the end of, not the end end, but the end of April. So, um, I'll, And I wanted to this time perhaps bring in a speaker, and I know Tara and I have actually talked, so we're going to try and mix it up a little bit and maybe even invite some other um, library trustees that are from some of our neighborhood libraries that we already do some, some work with and partnerships. Uh, just so you can have uh, an opportunity to network with some other trustees as well that day. Okay? Good. Great. Good. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion on the goals and the update that we just went through? Yes? Uh, since you were talking about uh, bringing the speaker and another thing, I think in, in April you have Library Week going on with uh, another Wall Lake or somewhere? Wall Lake City Library, if yes. You, Put it in that during that time. That will be good because people will be coming there, so that that will enhance the whole thing. I can look. It'll be dependent on the speaker's availability, but yeah. I can definitely look for that time frame. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Moving on to number ten, treasurer's report. We are temporarily without a treasurer, but I will make a few comments on the items that are listed there. The current year budget is on page 48 through 50, and again, it's the same budget we've seen now for quite some time and what we're operating on. Unless someone has questions, we'll, we'll move on past that. The next three pages, 51 through 54, shows the budget for 2016-17. 
Now, we've seen that before, and we gave a first pass approval to it. If you look on the second page of the agenda, uh, 14 matters for board action, we need to have a second and, I believe, final vote Correct. on this budget now that there's been some input from the city. Julie, I don't know if there's anything to say about the input you got from the city or not. It's, it's very minor, but I just wanted us to both be starting on the same page, the city okay. and us, um, when we move forward in July. So the only change, which, we will, which I'll be looking for a vote tonight, is just to recognize that if you look at the last page of the budget, which, which would be page 54, the two highlighted um, budget numbers in yellow, 976.100 parking lot improvements, and 986.000 internal technology capital outlay. Those are new numbers that we didn't have in the last um, budget that I brought to you. So they gave me the correct numbers just to make sure we're all on the same page for the year. So that would, there was no changes to any numbers whatsoever. I would like to point out, if you look at the year end, um, the 2015-16 year end in the yellow column, there is, under data processing 986, $17,500. That was in the last budget. I, I apologize because I didn't bring it to your attention in our meeting last month, but that is an additional cost that we need for some server costs with upgrading our security cameras and adding some security cameras that were already in budget for this year. So I just want to draw your attention to that amount. I also want to let you know that I just found out today we were going to be piggybacking with the city, um, hopefully for some cost savings and some of their security camera work that was going to be done fourth quarter, which is April, May, and June. Um, we just saw today um, an update on RFPs and things like that that comes from the city, and there's a to be determined and not a date anymore as to them working on that project. Barb Rakowski, my head of IT, was going to be reaching out to find out, are they pushing that project now into potentially the 16, 17 year? If that's the case, I'll be back to you just so we earmark that money from this budget and roll it over. So I just want to bring that to your attention tonight. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do they have, the city had the specification already? No, they haven't. They haven't done that. So that's RFP and everything still has to be done. I'm worried that we might not be in this fiscal anymore time frame. So but I'll have to... want to go do it this year? Well, we have the money set this year. Um, and it, it will save us money if we do it together. I do believe by putting out bids like that, we get a, we get a more competitive bid. Yeah. That's why we reached out to them. So if we have to wait and move it into the new year, I'll be bringing that to your attention so we can do it next year and, and go with that. But I'm talking about the specification in the RFP. Yeah, we already yeah. have our specifications done. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. What, if any, impact the bond refunding that is from the Aldrich Communique uh, from the city of Nevada mm -hmm. also, what impact would that then have, say, on our fund uh, balance? Um, That's a great question. As far as I know, you know, that is a separate bond. The, and so it shouldn't have any impact on the current, um, the current uh, budgets that we have. However, it would impact a decrease for taxpayers, if I agree. Correct. Mm -hmm. yes. Because of our AAA uh, right. bonds. <coughs> right. Right. Mm -hmm. so, that, um, so I haven't heard that there's going to be any changes. So the community would benefit from a lowering Yes. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, the city is looking at other issues for, um, to take to the voters. So this would probably be a very positive oh. impact in the community mm -hmm. at no sacrifice to our budget. Right. As far as I understand, you are correct. Mm -hmm. Good question. We talked right. about some of these yep. ahead of time. You're, you're a step ahead of you us. You are. Good job, Doreen. Um. <laughs> I'm glad. No, thank you. As soon as I see City of Novi Council. Sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> Rather than wait till a few more minutes go by and we address the 16-17 sure. budget um, under matters for board action, I would suggest that any discussion and comments we have on it, we do now and right. then put it to a vote if we wish to approve it. Mm -hmm. So I would open it up for questions, comments. Um, again, except for Melissa, it should look pretty familiar to what we met about in January and February. <laughs> 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 
If there is no questions or comments, I would entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Would we put it to a vote? Everyone who would approve say aye. 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 Any opposition? <laughs> It has been approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, going back to point 10, um, just brief comments on Fund 268. Our revenue increased by a little over $17,000 in February, making our year-to-date revenue through February $2,721,000. Our expenditures through the first seven months are $1,752,000. It's about 57% of what we had budgeted for, and since we're now through 66% of the fiscal year, our overall position on expenditures is good. Uh, year to date, we have a positive net of revenue and expenditures for Fund 268 of $969,000. Barring any unforeseen expenditures, we're on track to use very little of our fund balance this year and certainly the least amount of our fund balance in the past several years. Fund balance consumption has been a major concern of the board for the past few years, and it's really nice to see this improvement. Hats off to the director and Thank your you staff. Sir. Thank you. Um, fund 269 had no significant activity uh, this past month. The balance sheets on page uh, 61 and 62 you'll see the balance in our fund 268 to be 2,688,000 at the end of February and for fund 269, 1,653,000. Before we move into a subject we touched on briefly, the library board refunding opportunity, any questions on February financials? All right, in that case, if you turn to Page 73, you'll see some information, um, again, that we briefly just touched on. Uh, as Doreen stated, the city, uh, very fortunately, um, through good work, was able to get their bond rating upgraded to a AAA. That's going to allow them to uh, do what they call an advanced refund. The bottom line effect is a savings of approximately $95,000 per year over the remainder of the bond, which is about a million one forty-eight. So it's really a, a good move for the city, for the taxpayers. And as we said, at this point in time, it being a separate bond, there should be certainly no negative effect to the library budget. How long is this um, bond? When would we have to go to the people to have it renewed by the vote? This, this just ends. 2027, I think that's, yeah, yeah October. It, matures, it matures 10 -127. Right. So then we wouldn't, that's just a building bond. <coughs> we wouldn't be going, yeah. What, what we would, if, if there was an opportunity for looking for funding, it would be the Headley. That's right. Correct. Headley. Right. And so we're currently at 0 .77 of a 1.0 mil. So that's, that's where we would potentially look at something. Because yeah. mm -hmm. this is really... This is a separate bond and sp specific to the building. And it will be a, to benefit to the um, taxpayers. I certainly do hope that there will be sufficient communication and even a little fanfare um, on the part of the city and the library mm -hmm. that um, with the city's cooperation, we have been able, or their generosity, have been able to cut it back I can find I, out from Cheryl in communication if there's anything I, being planned. I think that that really is something that um, the city should be flaunting um, because of the AAA uh, uh, bond that they have. So um, I, I think it's a great opportunity to let the people know how fiscally responsible mm -hmm. the library is and the city mm -hmm. is and that there's a cooperative spirit uh, between the city and the library. Mm -hmm. Sure. And I will go ahead and reach out. Mm -hmm. Well said. I think it'd be no by news front page. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, Thursday, tomorrow, the paper comes out so we can find out. You know, sometimes they're in the audience yeah. and reporting on things, so you never know. But I will, I will touch base with Cheryl. Mm -hmm. 
All right, moving on to point 11, the director's report. Okay, so just a few things to highlight for you. Um, let, me, let me get there. Um, I wanted to make sure that, you know, we had approved last month um, to go ahead with changing our library board meeting dates. Um, we're going from a Wednesday to a Thursday, which will start January of 2017. So you have plenty of time for your calendar to, to get ready for it, but I am confirming, and all these dates were checked with the city to have this room and to have no conflicts whatsoever. So all of these dates that you have in your book right here, they are all set and all ready to go for next year, okay? Absolutely. Um, Money Smart Week, you know, I had shared that the library, Novi, was part of a big project that helped lots, close to 200 libraries across the state of Michigan to get free books in their libraries, to be giving out um, to young people up to about a um, kindergarten, first grade reading level uh, to celebrate Money Smart Week, which will happen the end of April to talk about you know, being money conscious and, and learn about saving. And Novi was the location that took the drop of 8,000 books that got delivered. Um, we worked with Community Financial, who were wonderful um, supporters and volunteers, and they met with me on a Friday morning for about four hours, and we boxed up, and close to 7,000 of those books went to over, you know, like I said, hundreds of libraries across Michigan. We were able to use the TLN uh, delivery system, which were part of our large consortium. They helped us get those books out so that there were no postage charges, which is huge, you know, savings um, to get those kinds of materials out to different libraries. And so um, you were all part of being part of a bigger project for the state um, and and Novi gets to you know t um, tap their head a little bit and and say that we were part of it I'm always um, happy to do something where it involves the state of Michigan and the Library of Michigan and that's where the program um, you know got supported uh, for through our state so I'm, I'm very excited that a lot of our, our library friends get to have some free books to use for some programming we will also be doing a program at our library in April um, specific to that. Um, supporting literacy, I just want to give you a heads up to a meeting I had uh, a couple weeks ago. I'm very excited about the preschool building that's you know going to be opening here in Novi and I took the time to see the plans and learn more about it with Dr. Matthews and Ann Hansen who is uh, the coordinator for the preschool building and, and for that program and I'm happy to tell you we don't have a lot of details yet but the Novi Library will be a big, big part and an integral part of this opening and how they are going to be providing preschool service. They already do but now it's going to be you know primarily in one building, which is awesome. How many children are you talking about? We're talking, um, the numbers at this point are over 300 that they have registered for, for the fall year. So when I met with Dr. Matthews, um, you know, just as a preliminary meeting, it was, the, we want the library to have, you know, definitely a face in there and be a part of their programming in some way. Does that mean, you know, a, a weekly visit from the library to connect? They won't have a media center in their building, so that's great. That means that we, you know, that we can have that component. Um, I think we're going to be looking at some reading incentive type programs with parents and young readers and reading early and getting them ready for kindergarten. So that's another part of it. Um, Myself and another staff person will be attending a workshop next week, which is Ready, Set, Read um, for children, and hopefully we'll learn a little more, and maybe we can bring some of that expertise into what we think we'll be planning for um, the future with, with the Novi School District. But I'm very excited. We've been doing a lot of literacy for years. I mean, that's, that's really the... The crux of what, how we started, you know, as libraries, as, as young readers and story times and stuff. But I think this now puts us on the map for having a major literacy project program that will stay permanently through our district. That's what I'm excited about. So as soon as I know more and as we continue to move with plans, I will keep you abreast, but it was a great meeting. Nice. Okay. Um, in, in the packet, which doesn't need approval, I just wanted to bring to your attention and for you to be aware of, we went ahead and signed a memorandum of understanding with the City of Novi Parks and Recreation for the shared van that they are graciously letting us use now that we've sold our, our old delivery van, and we use that to go out to um, some of our older adult um, communities, so we're excited about that. Um, following, you see information about the library entrance 
and a tentative timeline. This is still tentative because bids and things like that have not um, gone out yet. I haven't heard anything further. Um, March 22nd, you know, we've got the bid set documents complete. That's what they're looking for in terms of a time frame. And then, um, as you see, the dates following. So I, I can tell you that Adam Wayne um, and Brian Coburn both have been wonderful in terms of communication through the DPS department. Um, Craig Messerneck, trustee uh, and president now, uh, went with me to a meeting in late February to get more details about the project and to let them know that we are moving forward with the option of the main entrance and widening that. Other options that were looked at did not come out feasibly and we talked about that at our last meeting. So, so but what we, page is the option? So um, if you look at it, the options, okay, the page 65, 66, and 67, that is the basic um, plan. 68, 69, and 70 is the alternative. And as you can see, probably 69 is the easiest one to read because it's a little darker. It shows a little more out into 10 mile that they want to address with some issues, which is where the additional costs are. And they felt if they could do that now, that'll save us later with some, with some other things that are, are going on. And I don't know, um, President Messerneck, if you want to add anything to that. No, it's essentially the difference in the two options is simply doing a little more work on 10 mile as you approach the, um, the drive into and out of the library. So it seems like it makes sense for not a great deal of money more to go ahead and fix that up. It, it looks like it could use it. So um, you know, I don't know that that's been totally determined yet, but I, my hunch is it will go that direction. Right. Um, I'm going to skip the 3D um, printer information until we get to matters for board action. Yes. This is a city to post advertisement in MITN. What is that? That is an online bidding um, software that they use that they put, post all of their RFPs on. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep. So they handle all that, which is great to be working with the city for that, for having that um, connection. Um, so I'll skip 3D because I know we'll talk about it under matters for board action, and I'll go to page 83. Uh, this is a lot of great information from April Stevenson about um, what's been going on in information services. So a lot of the programming going on comes under April, the youth and adult. And you can see that she's incorporated some great photos as well. Um, just lots of programs going on daily so it's pretty exciting <clears throat> going back to that memorandum to understanding between city and uh, about the van uh, in the middle you said that uh, <clears throat> responsible for cost of repairs if an accident abuse and neglect to takes place anything do we keep any contingency money in our budget we haven't okay no do you want to consider that we can, um, and I mean, I'm hoping that we don't have that, but yes, we, we could in the future. Because we didn't put it the, in the budget the for this year. It's a similar situation. You remember two years ago, we right. had a filter problem. Yes. Same way I'm saying, mm -hmm. you don't know. I think, I think it's better to keep some contingency money. Okay. Would that be just for the deductible, though, or would it be more? Because I'm sure the city has... We do, and we have insurance and insurance. coverage. So any yeah. damage or anything would probably be more of insurance mm -hmm. than... Right. And then it'll depend on where the accident took place. Hopefully not us. Knock on wood, right? So I was pleased with the language. Um, it, you know, it mentions that the library will, will take on the full payment of the gas. We are using the van the most. They are not using it very often. I think that's very fair, especially when they've offered to do the maintenance type work. So I think it evens out very well. Um, and this is just for a year, so we can try it and see how things go, and then, you know, a year from now, go ahead and, and revisit it. Yeah, it's been it's been nice to see since I've been on the board the cooperation and communication between the library and the city on a variety of issues. This just being one of them. Yeah. So I think it's beneficial to us, and I think it's beneficial for the city also. So well, and a huge thank you to the Parks and Rec Department because you know they were willing to you know, uh, allow us this usage and, and, and then it also gets the van out a little more too. I think they were struggling, you know, with having a van that wasn't getting used all the time, but yet they, you need it. They have times when they have to haul things and they're moving with parks and rec and different um, events. So um, I, I think it'll be, I think it is already because it started this fall. I think it's been a great relationship so far. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know, but I can check. And I know it's low, though. But I will double check. It is a um, 2007. Mm -hmm. 2007. I'll check on the mileage for you, though. That's the problem is it doesn't get used much, you know, and the, but the years, you start seeing wear and tear only just because it's not used a lot either. We, with the old van, um, and I, I, I think I was, I think I was on board at the time, literally our tires rotted because it wasn't getting a lot of use. So it's, you know, it, we, things like that happen. So it's great that we're sharing it. It is getting more use now. Um, so moving forward, I gave you a little update with information technology from Barb. Uh, these are, it, as you can see, technology and what, what's going on with her department is always busy and troubleshooting and completing tasks. So she's, she's quite, um, her and her staff are, are quite busy. Um, following along, a lot of uh, statistics for you. Page 89 with, you know, library cards that were issued and items checked out for the month. Um, items borrowed, things like that. We're getting ready. If you look in that fifth line under support services statistics on page 89, it says read box. We're getting ready. Um, we've had our discussions with DPS to get those boxes put in the parks by early May, and we'll start our read box um, distribution for this summer. We will be keeping just to the three locations, um, Lakeshore, Rotary Park, and ITC. Um, but we are keeping our eyes and ears open for anything else that comes about with the city that we might be able to put another location in. So it's pretty exciting. We have one more box that's been, um, that's been built through the DPS department. So just kind of waiting. They've got some park, you know, some park things that are up and that's being discussed. I'd really like to see one. Um, we've done very well with the north east with Lakeshore. Uh, Rotary Park being more the southeast, and then ITC being the um, north, well, the west, you know. So it'd be great if we could get something up towards oh, the northwest, the northwest yeah. and then really cover all quadrants of the city. And I think that's what I'm kind of waiting on is to hear if anything's come about. Okay. Did you have a comment? I did, but I think she answered the question. Okay. Oh, wonderful. Just, yes. uh, Julie, just a quick Sure. Question for you. On page 95 on the Gale courses, yes. I noticed that we had a nice jump in completed classes in February. I was just curious if you've gotten any feedback from users or mm -hmm. have any comments about how that's been received. Well, it's definitely something that we are, um, we <coughs> are going to do another year of. We wanted to give it another year for people to get to know what it is. It's, it's a marketing thing and letting people know that they have this opportunity, you know, to be taking free courses through the library. Um, I don't get feedback. I don't see responses or anything. I can check into it to see if there's, like, any comments that come directly through the company, but I haven't, so I don't know, you know, from patrons how it's going. Yeah. But usually if I don't hear anything that's a good thing <laughs> yeah it was just nice to see yes. that it jumped up yeah. we've, in we've done a little more pushing you know it, it's a reminder to us we got to <clears> keep <throat> going with it I I actually had um, like the city provided to the community in the fall with the ambassador program they are right now doing it with city employees and there's a number of students that have opted to be part of this education and so I spoke to uh, 12 uh, city employees this morning about the library and giving them a tour and, and sharing, you know, what we do. And Gale Courses was a big part of it. It's like, you know, you work for the city. We, if you live in a community that's not Novi, we can work with you as, as you being a city employee. We can work with you to get you a card. And you can take advantage of these free courses as well. And it might be beneficial to you even in your work sure. that you do every day. Mm -hmm. Another um, statistic, yes. I note that the meeting room rentals have increased dramatically, yeah. which I think is positive <laughs> on a number of fronts. So the revenue, mm -hmm. and maybe even more than that, exposing more and more people to the library, mm -hmm. how yeah. nice it is, and right. maybe we'll even see a future board member come from someone who Absolutely. is involved in the room. I think Julie could speak about meeting rooms because she's in the admin office and works very closely with the patrons that reserve. It is a busy, busy service that we offer. It's been really busy yeah. the last couple months. Mm -hmm. yeah, so Do we have anyone who has an ongoing reservation? A lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of businesses are ongoing. 
They do like our space. They appreciate it. I, I do not get, and I, and I know the ladies in the office don't either, really any negative feedback for the space that we provide. You know, we try to be very customer focused, you know, in making sure that everything that they set up is there for them. There's no worries. Um, we do some before hours. We do after hours events that we've offered. And uh, this has been a, a nice little revenue for the library, but sure. also, like you said, Trustee Lawler, it is a way to connect with community members that maybe didn't realize that, you know, um, there was a patron in today paying for her son's eighth birthday, and they're gonna host it at the library and have a Lego birthday <laughs> party, and it's at the library, and I think, what a great place to bring somebody to, to meet. So, you know, they can bring in food, they can bring in um, cupcakes and stuff, I, I think it's great. Yeah. Trustee Verma? Just to tell my <coughs> trustees, because about eight years ago, when Julie had just arrived, we were in the old library. We used to give free these, all the meeting rooms. Okay. And uh, then I experienced one of the persons, I mean, is the Indian organization. They had booked from two o'clock to six o'clock, and I was asked to take this uh, new library blueprints to explain to them. Now, I went there 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 5.30 they showed up, and there was a meeting 5.30, and they booked from 2 o'clock. I felt so bad about that. Yeah. So I said, let's charge that. When, when people had, get something for we free, had tough they don't always value it. People were, people were meeting me outside. They said, no, this is wrong, this, that. But I think, see, now we are making $6,000. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. It is. It's, I think it's been a great service, and, and it gives everyone... Um, the opportunity. You know, everyone has uh, the same opportunity to be renting. So, um, the other thing I'd like to point out Just to you. You have to tell them that was, uh, our trustees can rent this by 20% less. 10%. 10%. Okay. Yes. And staff and mm -hmm. the trustees. Yep. yep. And, awesome. and the staff, correct. Yeah. So, and it, I mean, it really is, an, uh, the room is a great space. If oh, yeah. you're doing a shower, um, Birthday party showers, we do a lot of baby and, and wedding showers and, and stuff. So it's, it has, it's, you know, nice carpeting, nice walls. You know, you're looking for just nice, comfortable seats. And My baby yeah. shower was there. <laughs> <laughs> I had the double room, yeah. the double big rooms, because I like people and I like gifts. Um, and uh, my baby's first birthday party. That's right. And, and so you didn't get 10% then? I, I, wasn't, I wasn't a trustee. She then. wasn't a trustee oh, then. Okay. So I didn't get Do we have a birthday coming up? Yeah. Um, for, for year three, we're looking at the activity because uh, yeah. he's okay. a little older, so yeah. we like a little messier. I know. Yeah, Great. Right? And that's a rental too. So it's like yeah. people, if they're looking for a smaller room, but it works. So it's, it has, it's, it's, I think it's been a great, it was a great move and a smart move for the board to do that. I have libraries that call me all the time asking about it and, you know, uh, policies and, and how do you go about making that change and was it difficult for the community? It wasn't. The community really didn't have too much of an uproar for it at first and I think they understand that we're not charging, I mean, our, our costs are, are very, very um, reasonable. They are. I mean, we, we are the cheapest in town and yet I do think some of the, you know, some of the venues, I think we're a nicer venue compared to, they might need to be updated a little bit and because we're newer. But, um, and it does draw people in that I, I hear from people all the time that, you know, I haven't even, I haven't been in here. I didn't even know. It's like, wow. And, and some of them are from, yes. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I say that, obviously I know her better now. But right. Even those other events, mm -hmm. I didn't know her as well. And sure. she just yeah. made you want to book all the time. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Good at what she does. Yes. Good. Yeah, so it's good. I think people are getting a very good service out of doing that. If you look at page 96, I just want to draw um, your attention to one thing. The, um, the charging stations usage. Do you see how it's been zero for the last few months? We found that there was um, a problem with the station, and uh, that is being resolved. So I just wanted to let you know that um, it should be back up and running, and, and we talked with the city because they actually handle all that. So I just wanted to make sure you're aware. It wasn't because of no usage. I think there probably has been opportunities for people needing it, but we, it's, not been, it's been, not been working properly. Okay? Overdrive? Overdrive is our downloadable books. It's the company that we... That we pay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. Great. So, I have, yes. I have one question. Sure. You, um, on, under the uh, tech, the IT. Yes. We talked about the technology survey. What yes. type of questions is? is I, I, I haven't heard about it, so I was just curious. 
why don't I send you a copy of it so you can see the questions that were asked? Okay, perfect. okay. thank you. Um, I'll send it to everyone. We did close it. Um, in fact, in my management meeting today, we did not get the responses we had hoped. You know, when we did the reference survey, over 600 responses came through. Um, Barb had reported that only 87 came through. And I, and I, in our conversation, we said, you know what, I think what we need to do is we need to promote it a little differently and we need to, like we did with the reference survey, we need to solicit it and have for a week a table and say, please fill this out, please give us your feedback. So we didn't do that like we did with the reference one. We learned from that and, and we do, will do that in the future. But I'll be happy to share with you the, the survey send, questions. Do they send it out? in the email form or is it, it just people that come in? It's people that come in, it's on the website and it goes out in the e-newsletter. Okay. So, I mean, that's really all of our, our avenues for the most part, but. Can you, can we ask the city to help promote it too with <laughs> any of their communication? Mm -hmm. okay. I know we did with our reference one and I don't know if we did with the tech, so I will double check. Thank you very much. Can we ask one more question? Sure. Absolutely. What is free gal in Zinio? Great questions. <laughs> and, and 95. Great questions. And you will be using these words now forever. Freegal is free and legal music. So you can download five songs a week with the library, with your library card at no cost. And that for young people and, and older people, you know, to have free music and not be paying $1.99 a song. It's pretty amazing. So you can, that's a downloadable service through the library. Free and legal music, free legal. And then Zinio is our online magazines. So we have access to over 200 online full text magazines through the library that you can get with your library card. So is that with the app or you have to go to the website? You have to go to the website. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Gail. Gail is our um, courses. Thank you. I know all these crazy names, but they're good names to remember. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Anything on the historical commission? Um, I put in their uh, minutes. Those are, were approved minutes. Um, I, I don't have anything new. Still okay. working on the David Barr book, um, and it's moving along. Um, good. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. All right. I and think the friends did not have a meeting this month. So they'll be back in they'll be back um, in April for yeah, the next. There's meeting. a lot they, of snowbirds. They, in the yeah, room. they take a couple months off in the winter. Mm -hmm. I talked to John McKinnis yesterday, and he mentioned that they were needing volunteers to help station the days and times that they were open. So I know that they were looking for people to help with that. That's the other thing he mentioned to me right. when we were talking about um, that. For their for their um, their office hours, mm -hmm. is that what it was? Their yes. office hours. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're interested in getting involved with the, the historical commission, what they can do is they can show you all the things that people tend to come into the historical room for, um, whether it's digitization or whatever, and um, looking up records and stuff. There's a little bit of a, of a um, training you'll want to go through with them just to get yourself familiarized with the local history room, but I know they welcome volunteers whenever. Mm -hmm. I think, unless there's other questions on that topic, it moves us to number 12, committee reports. So at this time, uh, I know we've talked about the HR committee and they're going to be working on the slate for library board officers. Um, there's no action at this time with the policy committee. In fact, we're gonna get ready for the policy committee to get, to get going. And I think what we should do actually is wait until we fill um, we could do that next month. Yeah, um, when the new board comes. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. It's they are, they are, When the new board is approved by the board, right. and then at that time we should put it yes. on our agenda yeah. so we will work on these uh, uh, committees also. Correct. Yeah. So that's May because the board members will take their, the board members will take their new offices mm -hmm but then you will decide who is going to be on different committees. I think that would be great, and then we'll be able to move forward with some with policy committee and things like that. Yeah, we obviously have quite a few openings since we yes. lost some people. Right, so this will be good to get everybody into yeah. some new... Um, we you know. can ask each of our board member which, mm -hmm. for which they are interested so they can ask. Sure. <coughs> okay, thank you. That would be great. 
um, building, we, we updated you on the building landscaping committee and, and that was in regard to the main entrance. So I think that we are good for now. I think that's it. Mm -hmm. That takes us to our second public comment opportunity. Once again, it's a time for anyone to come out of the audience, approach the podium, and discuss or raise issues or talk to the library board. In order to hear all citizen comments at a reasonable hour, the board requests that the speakers respect a five-minute time limit. This is not a question and answer session, but it is, however, an opportunity to voice your thoughts with the Novi Public Library Board of Trustees. Seeing no one coming forward at this time, we will close the second public comment section and move on to matters for board action. The first one that you see there, we've already addressed and voted on and approved the Budget 268. Um, uh, the second one is the language that I more or less just read. I'd like to make a comment, though, before we vote on it. When I listened to the City Council meeting this past week, and actually in weeks past also, when the mayor makes a similar type of comment, after he talks about this not this is not a question and answer session. He also has wording, and I don't remember the exact wording, but it essentially says the council members are not to respond to what is being brought up from the audience. In other words, it's we're here to we'll listen, but it's not to be a dialogue back and forth. Mm -hmm. Although we've not had any issues like that, I think if we added some kind of verbiage to that, it would alleviate some potential problems um, and avoid a lot of back and forth for the same reason that the City Council does. But I open that up to comments and suggestions because it is different from what we have here. Well, I think, oh, go ahead. It does work for City Council. It makes it very, very clear as right. to why it's not a question and answer. And um, it puts it right up front. So mm -hmm. I would support your suggestion strongly. Good. Good. Yeah, I was going to say I agree. Um, just even, even stating that it's not a question to answer, we can get a, into a slippery slope if we start answering. Right, well, that's so, what I was afraid right. of. The goal is yeah. just to absorb, right. so right. Yeah. I think that's... We're anxious to hear their comments, mm -hmm. but this is not the place to have a back and forth. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of uniformity, too, that it's, this is how, it's a citywide, you know, guidelines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, well, here's what I'd like to do then. I'd like to bring it back for a third draft. Um, you know, we don't have a timeline for this. This is not critical. Right. So let me look into that language, um, ask the city for it, bring it back and for approval for next month. Yeah, okay. I, I think that's a good idea. Right. I appreciate you doing that. Yep, absolutely. I, I also like the change of the words on the disclaimer. Good. Yeah, I think it is much more user-friendly mm -hmm. than what the city of Nova has. Okay. And um, I think it's much more welcoming with the rationale there. Right. I was wondering what why we change from three to five. Great question. And when I went back and looked at the bylaws, our bylaws say five. So unless you're willing to do a bylaw change, which I didn't think was necessary, I went ahead and kept the five minute. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'd like to ask opinions. Um, the disclaimer that we have there, to me, looked like it, it's our policy. I didn't know that it was necessarily something that we needed to read each time. We had talked about putting it on the website and perhaps in other documents so that people know it, but not necessarily to read it twice each meeting. But I'm open to suggestions because, once again, we had talked about it at the last meeting. At least in my mind, it was unclear if we wanted it read every time or simply public right. knowledge that that was the policy. And are you referring to the disclaimer questions? Yes. Yeah, I don't think that needs to be read. Okay. That's my opinion. I, I agree. Correct. I don't think that's something, it's, city council doesn't read it, so. Okay. It's, and also, um, we have a pamphlet that we put out as people come in that they can grab, yeah, kind of explaining, there. you know, what goes on at the library board meeting. We will make sure that that information gets added to that as well. Great. Okay. Good. Thank you. Great. Thank you. All right, 14C, the HR employee, employee policies. Yes. Certainly would like to start by thanking the two of you who worked on that, and along with the director and her staff. It was a labor of love, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> Six it, months it worth. Was, it was 
pretty much overwhelming yes. to sit down and go through <laughs> all of that. I, I can't imagine how much time you spent on it. So let me, let me start yes. by good. <laughs> let me start by saying thank you. Mm -hmm. That being said, are there any, I, everyone's had a chance, I know you haven't, Melissa, right. but everyone else had a chance to read it, review it, yes. send in comments, Correct. get feedback from Correct. the director. Mm -hmm. um, at this point in time, uh, before we vote on it, are there any other comments or questions or issues anyone wants to, to raise on those policies? I would kind of like to know um, what changes you've made <coughs> after we read it. The to, do you know what I'm saying? All, all we had was your grammatical change, and then I had a question um, specific to, and, and it was Trustee Masternick that sent it, um, specific to um, the holiday time is that right? I think it was the holiday time. Which I, oh, um, I'm sorry, not holiday, but the um, probationary period yes. for when someone was hired. <laughs> and did it got changed to um, date of hire is what it got changed to instead of after our, our probationary period. The question from Trustee Messerneck was, does that create a bigger problem, you know, in paperwork and stuff to do it that way? Well, it actually creates a bigger problem by us waiting and not being on the <coughs> same time frame that we are with the city, which is why I, I would like us to make the change and we, and we made that change as an option. And, and I'm, not, I'm fine with that. I did remember <laughs> yes. that Mark brought up the same Correct. thing in the meeting and mm -hmm. I think you probably told him the same thing and right. I might have missed that. So it, it's, it really does help us more by doing that. I didn't get any other comments or questions. I got uh, that it looked good from people and that they, were, that they were happy with it, but that was it. So we would be rolling forward with your change, changing that tense. Uh, it was changing the person. Mm -hmm. Everything had been third person. Right. And then all of a sudden there was like two paragraphs that talked about second person. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, I just said, Mm -hmm. so, Good catch. Yep. So, uh, I mean, they've been reviewed and reviewed and reviewed. Um, staff and, yep. and all of you. And so I'm this evening without any um, further questions. If you don't, we well, be looking. Yep, at this point I would one, entertain a motion. Yes, yes, yes one, certainly. Question? Sure. Did somebody read it backwards to make sure there's no spelling errors? Um, like... There, I don't know there. if, right. I mean, I just learned that if you read something backwards, right. you catch things. So. We haven't, but we can. Okay. And just, we could do that just for checking. Medical. Yes. I know that absolutely. silly, but No. It's, well, um, and that's why we had a number of eyes on it. So, absolutely. But we can do that before we um, release it and, out. And if we stumbled into something like right. that, we can, I believe we can always make yes. updates to it. It's mm -hmm. a living document. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. I kind of read it. With, it with is a lot of any other any other questions comments on it okay may i suggest that the people who support and second it are were on the committee that, that did it. it's a great idea <laughs> so i would entertain a motion from hopefully one of the two of you if not both to approve the hr employee policies as have been distributed to all of us this past so few moved. weeks all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? <laughs> it has been moved and approved Thank and unanimously you. agreed. <laughs> so what will happen now, just to give you a little bit of time frame, is I, have, I always meet with staff and do all staff meetings um, following our board meetings so that I, I keep them abreast of what's going on with all of you and, and changes with the library. I have three meetings set up next week, two mornings and one afternoon, to try and catch as many of the staff as I can in a personal meeting with them to go through uh, that policy manual and changes. Then they will all get, all the employees will get their own manual because it's HR related. They will all receive their own. That will take some time to make those copies and get that going, but I will start addressing you know, what those changes are so that they're aware of them. And then they go into effect. Um, there isn't anything major that's going to be so compelling, um, you know, that once it goes into effect, there's going to be a major change. So, um, the dress, the dress. Well, and actually, the break policy. That would be another one that you know, instantly they will be they will be excited about. Actually, 
by recognizing that. So, um, but that'll happen all next week. We'll get working on that. And then as they have questions and things and as we get them acclimated to the changes, we will continue to do that. Good. Am I allowed so, to get a copy? Yes. In fact, <laughs> um, <laughs> I like you stuff. are now and I have <laughs> one for you. So okay. come see me afterwards. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you. Okay. One last item in the matters for board action, and that is the first draft of the 3D printing policy that starts on page 78. Hopefully you've had a chance to, to look at that. I'll, 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 I'll preface my question and comment, comment um, by saying that I know typically in the past we have gone through two drafts before we approved Correct. something like this. Mm -hmm. I would suggest that if there are not a lot of questions or comments regarding this policy that we can't deal with easily, um, if, if it looks essentially okay, because this is such a new area for us, and we know that there will probably be changes down the road we want to make, there are some things we'd like to get started doing with the 3D printer. So I would say if, if there are not questions that make you want to hold this up, that perhaps we could take a final approval vote tonight on it. But if not, that's fine also. Right. Trustee I, I just Park. had a, a concern because I've seen someplace on some documentary that people were using 3D printers to make guns. Mm -hmm. And um, it says here dangerous or unsafe. Mm -hmm. In many people's minds, a gun is not dangerous and it's not unsafe. In, in my mind, I do not want the 3D printer in our library making guns. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if weapons, weapons could be could something be. that we would add to mm -hmm. something that's prohibited mm -hmm. because it's protected by local, state, and federal law. Mm -hmm. So um, I have no problem with an E addition of weapons of any kind because that covers you Slingshots, completely. Guns, right. mm -hmm. Whatever is being deemed Knives. a weapon, mm -hmm. correct. So that would be up to you to make that change this evening. Mm -hmm. Now that's just my personal opinion. I don't know how the board feels about that. Well, I don't disagree with it. The only thing that I could see happening if somebody felt strongly about it is somebody saying, I have a, a permit approval for, for weapons and I don't know what his need would be to use this system, but I think we need to be prepared to deal with that if it comes up. Well, the introduction, I, I, I thought that same thing. Um, right. so when it says it may be used only for lawful purposes. Correct. Weapons are lawful. And so, um, could it be lawful and safe purposes? I, I, so the lawful kind of prohibits putting in no weapons. Um, so you're absolutely right, but that's just my personal opinion. I don't know how the board feels on it, mm -hmm. but... Um, no, I think it's a great point. I do. I think it is, too, mm -hmm. and I also think that it can get extremely litigious if we're not uh, wise about putting that in, exactly. because, exactly. Um, sure, it's it's legal, but if something bad happens, we don't want them to say, well, in your policy, you gave permission. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, right. Is, do we have access to the um, city of Novi attorney? Um, we do, I, um, we can check with them. I'd probably go with a different attorney that works specifically with libraries okay. and these types of um, policies, probably more. And I can, I can send this to her. Is that the lady that we mm -hmm. saw her work yes. with? She yes, 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 Anne is great. I, I, I think that, if, Mr. President, uh, I think that it's a strong enough feeling to, that we want it to stand up lawfully if we do agree, we do not want weapons of any kind, but knives, darts, I mean, it goes into a whole kind of thing mm -hmm. for safety with people. Mm -hmm. And so the lawful purposes at the top could well prohibit us from um, prohibiting <laughs> uh, weapons. Because so, it says lawful. Mm -hmm. What would you propose in lieu of lawful? Well, that's why the suggestion right. that we talk the about attorney. an attorney. So here's what I would like to do then, if only because I would like to continue to move this along. Yes. Because we, we are doing some programming in the library 
that will be coming up soon. So this is not public yet. Our plan was not to make this public until May, so we have another month. This will give me time to um, connect with the attorney, and um, I, I would like to see an approval with your added E, and then I'll take it to the attorney for any additional for a change in April for public. Does that make sense? Because I'd like to still have something in place with us working with the public that we're going to be working with when it comes to the kids and programming that we're going to do. I don't feel comfortable doing any programming without something. And we do have some programming that, we, that we've got going in April. Now, it's going to be very much um, uh, on my staff to be working with the kids. So it's going, you know, we're going to be monitoring it all. It's not just someone from the general public once this goes out to be doing whatever they want. So we have, you know, we'll be able to watch, coach, things like that. But I just don't feel comfortable not having a policy at all. If we took out the very first sentence in point one, the library's 3D printer may not be, may be used only for lawful purposes. If we simply struck that and, and said, the public will, the not, public be will not be permitted yep. to use it to do the following. Mm -hmm. I think that I think it still sits on its own. that, mm -hmm. that catch 22. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course in paragraph two, we talk about we reserve the right to right. da 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 Correct. da 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 da. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, the, I, the rest was strong. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I guess my suggestion would be take that very first sentence out of point one. Okay. Add an E about weapons, some language I like, like that. weapons of any kind. I just think we, we keep it, you know. And, and then maybe you can check legally and see mm -hmm. if there's anything right. else we ought to consider. If, mm -hmm. if there's language that really defines weapons. Correct. Okay. Legally. Yeah. I like that much better, too, because I don't have any problem saying we believe it's inappropriate for a library right. setting. Right, absolutely. I have a exactly. bit of a problem saying what's lawful. Yes, yeah. right, exactly. Okay. Yeah. The only yeah. other thing to consider from, from my end is um, when you talk to the attorney, mm -hmm. maybe asking is there some kind of disclaimer that we can put at the bottom that we're not responsible for X, Y, Z, and C. Yeah, yeah there's something that she might tag on with that that sounds legal and um, also frees us from any Speaking of that, and I maybe I missed it when I read it. Are we are we protected if someone does do a copyrighted product? It falls on the person. It is not us. Okay. It falls on the person who breaks copyright, not us. Okay. And we and we actually address that in terms of copyright. Um, oh my goodness, where am I at? D, one D? Yeah. Yes. Right there. In violation of another's intellectual property rights. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And being that they're paying for it, then it's their... Yeah, it's their responsibility. Yeah. It's and they provided their, the mm -hmm. file. Correct. So it's, right. it's we're all... We're yeah. the files. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would you check that also? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. If that statement, violation of another's intellectual property, how extensive that and copyright, is. sure. Mm -hmm. So that said, are we comfortable with approving, taking, striking the first sentence in line one out with the understanding that something in E would be added regarding weapons mm -hmm. and approving it without any further um, time delay at this point in time. I would also add um, with the attorney for how expansive violation of another intellectual property rights would be in order to cover stealing my design and, and making it. Nobody knew I had a design, but you did, and then you made it and you claim it. And so, I don't want us to be, I just want the attorney to be really tight mm -hmm. on that language mm -hmm. to protect us. Right. Yeah. Okay. If it's copyrighted, that's one thing. Right. But if you and I are sitting in the basement and I come up with this marvelous design and I'm all excited about it and show it to you and you run off and create it on a 3D printer and it's then yours, mm -hmm. it's 
fly into all of this that mean? Sure. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I have it. Stealing someone's design. I have that just to see what. Okay. And like I said, this is a public policy, but it won't be shared until May. So we have some time. Yeah. And I'm sure down the road we will tweak this oh, a little more absolutely. once we get our, our mm -hmm. toes wet in the Problems will 3D. Yeah. And, and, and until we unleash the beast yeah. <laughs> and, and allow it and, and start working with it, I can tell you there hasn't, you know, we're not the first to be doing this. Um, there's been a number of libraries that have already got into the 3D um, printing, you know, technology with patrons. So we looked at a number of policies, the committee that put this together, looked at different libraries and their policies to come up with something of language for us. Um, they did a great job, the, the group that was on this. And then, um, it, and, and we've not heard too much in terms of negativity of 3D printing being done and what people are creating to create a problem. I was trained in that opera. Yes. <laughs> no, I think it's great. If yep. you, I, I think any use of this, if you maintain draft on anything that's public before we agree to it, I think that's another must I would recommend. I'm sorry? If that you keep the word draft. Oh, on okay. On any publication in using this that you're working under For now, okay. Until we approve it after the attorney. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we, do we need this approved now in order to move ahead with what you're doing? No, I think you can wait. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. If, if she maintains it as a draft, yeah. mm -hmm. then, then we will approve it once the lawyer has looked okay. at it and we've had a chance to see those two words. Yep. And okay. then it becomes the final one, but meanwhile you can start working on your mm -hmm. draft. Everything. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else anyone wants to bring up? I, I just want to know, uh, Julie, are you going to meet with our new uh, members to talk about do's and don'ts of the library? Yes, I have a board orientation set up for next Thursday afternoon. Um, no. Both members are able no, to make I, it. I'm also new. Yes. <laughs> okay, you too. You just want special attention. You, you want to come Wait, to the party. The thing is, it's about eight years ago. Now it's too many things have changed. I just want to update myself. Do you want to come to the party? You can. What yes. time is that? So the date is next Thursday, which is the 24th, and we're meeting in my office from 3 until 4.30. Okay. Okay? Is there okay. any? Oh, yes? I just have another question. Sure. Um, I have a tendency to raise my hand and ask questions. And um, I could never have gotten away with that with Mayor Gatt. I love I can get away with it. But I don't know if it's appropriate. And so how would you like us to interject questions and ideas that you'd feel comfortable with? I'm, I'm fine Me with too. exactly how it's gone on. I realize that we are somewhat less formal than city council. And as far as I know, that is not an issue or a problem. I haven't heard that I, it yeah. is. I would like everyone to feel comfortable, obviously mm -hmm. being polite and professional like mm -hmm. everyone is, um, to be able to make comments. Right. And whether you say something to get my attention or raise your hand or start to speak, I think as, as long as we're not talking all over each other and somebody dominating the whole night, I think we're fine. I'd, I'd like it that way, actually. Mm -hmm. and, and I would like you to really feel that you have permission and right to kind of say, I think we've discussed this enough. Mm -hmm. you know, so um, I would kind of like look for you to handle me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tougher task than I signed up for, I think. <laughs> But I, I appreciate that. And if, it, if we get to that point, and we, we might at some point in time, yeah. um, then, then we'll, we'll do that. But we'll do it in a nice way, I think, all of us. So. That's why I preface, I have a few questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, you know, it's, like I said, it's certainly a little less formal than the city council. Um, but we've been, since I've been on the board, it's kind of been that way, and I've been comfortable with it. And Ramesh, if, if you're comfortable as we've been proceeding, um, mm -hmm. I, I think it makes sense. Mm -hmm. yep. So, if there's nothing else, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, I think we're unanimous. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you.